What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over in Pokemon Sword and Shield's 258 Pokemon of special overworld encounters of which there are 148 unique Pokemon. Of that there are 111 rarer Pokemon and of that there are 33 exclusive Pokemon. That's what I'm going to be going over today. <laughs> Do not fast forward. This is important and it explains what we're gonna be going over in this video. If you don't watch this, you're gonna be a little lost. And this explanation is a little longer than normal, but it is important. My explanation is still shorter than when YouTubers try to tell you about Dollar Shave Club or whatever advertiser is paying them to sound interested this week. First, who I'm going to be going over. From the time that you walked into the wild area, you saw an onyx staring at you in the face. He is a special overworld encounter, meaning that he is placed there in this space. Of all the spaces in the wild area, there are 148 unique species of Pokemon placed in these various spaces. Some Pokemon like Gyarados, Corviknight, and Golurk are in a lot of these spaces. You know where these Pokemon are. I'm not going to be going over them. I will be covering the 111 rarer Pokemon in these special overworld encounter spawn locations. Like this Haxorus, for example. He is found in the wild in a certain place in a certain weather condition, but only one, and it's a little hard to find. But look at this Machamp. Never ever in any core Pokemon game have you been able to catch a wild Machamp. And if you look at the Pokedex, it's going to say that it doesn't know Machamp's habitat. I do. There are 33 of these Pokemon. I'm going to be going over these in a little bit more detail throughout the video. Next, levels. If you have 0 to 8 badges, all these Pokemon are going to be between level 15 and 65. And keep in mind, you can only catch the Pokemon as per their levels as your badges allow. If you become champion, all these Pokemon are going to be level 60 or higher mostly 60 to 65. So if you want to wait to become champion, it's going to be very easy to fill your Pokedex. I recommend saving this video for later or adding it to your own personal watch list or adding it to your own personal playlist. That way you can watch it later. Next, weather. Some of these Pokemon are only going to spawn in one weather condition. Some of them are going to spawn in more than one weather condition. Some of them spawn in every weather condition. I'm going to be mentioning one type of weather that you can find this Pokemon in. You could probably find it in more, but I'm going to guarantee you at least one. I'm guaranteeing you a lot of things here. I know you've seen online how to change the weather. I even put out a video on how to change the weather, but I also put out a video on how to choose the weather. There are specific days of the year that you can put your Switch's internal clock to in order to choose the weather. You can screenshot this right now. This is month, day, year format for my fellow Americans, and this is day, month, year format for the rest of the world. These exact dates, the first days of these various months, are going to make your wild area weather a very specific weather. Hail and Sandstorm are locked in the mid game, and Fog is locked to the post game after you become champion. Changing your Switch's clock will reset some in-game daily events, such as battling at the cafes and some raids. I found to reset the raid spawning, just make sure you change your clock back to automatic day and then connect online, clear out your current raids, and you should be fine. Up next, respawns. If you encounter one of these Pokemon, meaning that if you run, defeat, or catch this Pokemon, it will not respawn for one to two real life days. Changing your clock will not reduce this time. If anything, it will increase the amount of time it takes for it to respawn. Spawn. It's also important to note that some Pokemon occupy the same specific overworld encounter space. If you catch one of these Pokemon in this specific space, then if there's another Pokemon that could spawn there, it will not spawn there until that one to two days happen, even under different weather conditions. So again, you're probably going to want to save this video because you're going to end up catching the Snorlax, you have to wait one to two days, make it fog, and then this Clefairy shows up. Got it? Some last notes. All these Pokemon seem to have predetermined IVs, EVs, held items, attacks, and more. Only three of these Pokemon have really good stats, a random Crawdon, a random Serena, and a random Gyarados. I don't know specifically which ones and under which weather conditions. But a lot of these species require special items or trading or trading with items in order for it to evolve. And you're going to be catching the evolved form of these Pokemon. 
Therefore, you can bypass more than half of the game's required evolutions via item or trading. So you can save your money, and it's perfect if you don't have any friends. And lastly, for the joke I made about Dollar Shave Club, obviously they're not going to sponsor the channel. So if you want, you can help support the channel with the brand new Starter Selects hoodies available at austinjohnplays.com slash merch. They're only 35 bucks, and I promise it's one of the most comfortable sweatshirts you are going to own. I also have t-shirts and Space Chicken merch available. AustinJohnPlays.com, thank you. Let's get on with the video. First up is Axu's Eye. Here we are going to be able to find Obama Snow when it's snowing, Cramorant on the right side pretty much under all weather conditions, Haxorus when it's clear out and a lot of other weather conditions, and Seismitoad when it's thundering out. Haxorus is available only one other place and Seismitoad is available a few others, but definitely pick up the Haxorus. Bridge Field. Here we have a Bear Tick, which is the only place in the wild you could find it outside of Route 10 which is also a unique spawn. It's going to be on this little island over here in the snow. We have Ferrothorn who appears when it's thundering out underneath the bridge. We have Gallade who appears on this island when it's thundering out. Be careful, he's very fast. We have Garbodor who appears in thunder. We have Greedunt who's next to these berry trees. We have Lanoon running all over the place during thunder. We have Norvern flying all over the place, I think in every weather condition, but I know in thunder. We have Obstagoon, I'm pretty sure in every weather condition, right outside of the daycare area. Seismitoad can be found here in the rain, and Vanillux can be found floating on top of the water in snow. He can actually be found in a lot of areas floating on top of the water in snow. Onto the Dabble Grove, here we only have three. We have Ludicolo or Shift Tree, depending if you're playing Sword or Shield, because they're version exclusive. I found it here in Thunder, and I also believe Rain. There is Ore Beetle, who I know appears in Thunder. He's only found one other place in the overworld. And you also have Vileplume, who appears under clear conditions, so save yourself a Leaf Stone. In the Dusty Bowl, we have Barbarical, who appears in Thunder. Claydol, when it's intense sunlight. Dustclops, when it's foggy out. Flygon, when it's clear. This is the only place you could find Flygon in the wild. You have Como or Tyranitar, depending on the version of the game that you're playing when it's clear out. This is the only time it appears in game. You have Rhydon when it's hot out. He's actually kind of common. You have Sandaconda when it's clear out. Shuckle when it's clear out. And I think every other condition. Careful, he moves very fast. And lastly, we have Pseudo Wudo, who appears when it's clear out. East Lake Axwell. Here we have Pillow Swine, who appears when it's hailing. We have Weezing, who I think is every weather condition, but he only starts to spawn after you have become champion. And we also have Zatu, who appears in hot weather and probably everything else. He's just kind of floating above you. In the Giant's Cap, we have Cincino. This is the only time that you can encounter Cincino in the overworld. Save yourself a shiny stone, and he's found in clear weather conditions. Here we have Colossal who is also a unique overworld spawn. This is one of the only times that you can find him, although he is not exclusive to this. Yeah, I know that you can find him in the thunder and I think most other weather conditions. And right next to him is Gengar. This is the only time you've been able to catch Gengar ever. That's fantastic. He is an overworld spawn. He is exclusive to this. He appears during the thunder and then you don't need to trade your haunter away. We have Glalie who appears here during the hail as well as some other places in the wild area. And lastly, we have the second time that you could find Ore Beetle. This is usually during the Thunder. In the Giant's Mirror, we have four Pokemon, three of which are exclusive. All of them appear under clear conditions. You have Blossom, who's right over here. Gastrodon, who's always in this pond. Gigalith, who's right here, and now you don't need to trade for him. And Machamp, who's right here, and you don't need to trade for him. And the Blossom saves you a Sunstone, so this is one of the smallest yet best areas for exclusive Pokemon. On to the giant's seat. Here we have Duraludden, which is, this is one of the first times that you can find him in the wild. Clear weather conditions. We also have Steelix, who's here all the time, and Vikavolt, who's here under most weather conditions, except for Fog, and then it's Musharna. This is the only place in the game that you can find a wild Musharna. I recommend you catch it. By the way, guys, if you see my videos all the time, you know who I am, and you're not subscribed, I ask that you consider subscribing. If you're part of the 48% of the people who watch my videos but are not subscribed to my channel, then just hit the subscribe button. It's not going to affect how much I show up in your newsfeed anyways. And for all you know, YouTube may have unsubscribed you. So, boom, just check real quick. Here in Hammerlock Hills, first of all, there's Kaparaja, 
who appears under most weather conditions, including clear, as soon as you walk out of the door. We have Halucha is here almost all the time, clear weather conditions. Clang, who's here during every single weather condition except for fog, because if it's foggy out, then Clang is replaced with its evolution, Kling Clang. Pretty sure that's how you say its name. Also, when it's foggy out, you can find Roserade, who Roserade is exclusive to this area in the wild area. You also have Tranquil and Unpheasant, who are available here in clear weather conditions. And you have Vileplume, who's also here under what clear weather conditions. Save yourself a leaf stone. This is one of two times that Vileplume appears in the wild area. Here is the Lake of Outrage, and this one is a doozy, mostly because you can find all of the evolutions here, so I'm going to be going over this by weather condition. You can find Grapclot during all weather conditions right next to the water, Leafeon, and Gardevoir when it's clear out, Hatterini when it's clear out and I think every other weather condition, Espeon when it's cloudy out, Shenotic when it's cloudy out, Sylveon when it's foggy, Chandelure and Flareon when it's intense sun, Vaporeon when it's raining, Umbreon during a sandstorm, Avalug and Glaceon when it's snowing or hailing, Jolteon when it's a thunderstorm, and next to the water, kind of on the other side of the pond, you could find Melodic only during foggy weather conditions. It is guaranteed to be here. If it's foggy, you're in post game, it's right there. Encounter it, and you're gonna save yourself so much time over catching a Feebass. Next is Monostoke Riverbank. This is where you first found Snorlax. I guarantee it, he's here during every weather condition. This is the only place you could find a wild Snorlax. However, in his same spot, if it's foggy out, there is a Clefable. Here during clear weather conditions, you could also find Eldogoss, Drapion, and Concolder. Concolder is exclusive to this spot. He is a trade evolution. Also in this pond, you could always find Whalmer and Basculin. Uh, they're not special. I just thought it was weird that there's a whale in this small pond. For all we know, there's actually lore behind that. Next is North Lake Mylock, which I asked British people on Twitter how to say that. Here we have Bolton, who appears in clear weather conditions as well as most others. Lipard, clear in most others. Lucario, who's exclusively spawning in this one location at the top of the hill. I know during clear weather conditions, maybe also some others. You can also find Pelipper, Seismitoad, and Skunk Tank here. They're hanging out during rainy or cloudy weather conditions. They're not that rare. We're rolling fields. This is one of the first areas. I'm not going to be going over like the many places you can find Diggersby and Mudsdale. But here you can find a dub wool during clear conditions, Manectric when it's thundering out, Mime Jr. when it's hailing out in this one exact spot. This is the only place that you could find Mime Jr. in the entire game. Also, during a thunderstorm, it's a Pikachu, and during most other conditions, it's Rosalia. You can find a Ninjask here during clear conditions. Onyx is in his spot. Pangoro is here during most conditions, especially clear out. And Vespa Queen as well, but you don't need me to tell you where Vespa Queen is. Next is South Lake Mylock. Here you can find a Crawdunt in the rain, a Drift Blim when it's clear out on top of the water, a Kingler in the rain, Machoke is everywhere, Octillery when it's clear out, kind of in the middle of the pond, Skunk Tank during a sandstorm, Thievil during the rain, and Vanellux during the snow on top of the water. Again, Vanellux is everywhere when it's snowing out and likes to spawn on top of water. On to the Stony Wilderness, where we have one exclusive being Dusk Noir, who now you don't need to, what is he, a Reaper Cloth or something? Here there's Araquanid during the rain, and everything else is in clear weather conditions, including Claydol, Crustal, Grimmasnarl, Serena, and Unpheasant. Again, Unpheasant is pretty common. But that Dust Noir, that's that's a catch. West Lake Axwell. Here you can find Grab Clot in the water during the hail, Cloister when it's foggy out in the water, Palpitoad hanging out on the land, and opposite of him across the bridge, you have Quagasire. Palpitoad is during most conditions, especially hail, Quagasire, most conditions, especially rain. 
And the last location is the Watchtower Ruins. Here you can find a Drift Blim during the snow, a Dusk Noir during fog, a Glalie during snow, and a Haunter during fog. I don't know why you would want to catch Haunter when you could just catch yourself a Gengar. Well, there we have it. There's all of the special overworld encounters of Pokemon Sword and Shield. It took me quite a while to make this video since the game came out. I've had an Excel sheet documenting it down. But if you found this video helpful, and I know you did, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.